Do you believe in the power of food? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> food has always had a powerful force in my life, and my grandparents are my food superheroes. We grew up in a small town in upstate New York with my grandparents, their five children, and 20 grandchildren. And their home was one of my favorite places to be. We cooked and ate together often. They had a backyard garden. They made everything from scratch. They had this tremendous respect for ingredients. And they, they uh, had a cellar full of homemade pickles and jams. They created so many amazing food rituals for us, including weekly deliveries of homemade bread and apple pie. And every single bite of their food, you could taste the love, generosity, kindness, and deep care. So as you can imagine, my grandparents had a profound effect on my passion for food and my, dining, or my career choices. And because of, because of the many food lessons that my grandparents modeled for me, I've always understood that food is the power that weaves all of our lives together. It has the power to connect us, heal us, nourish us, create memories, and transform experiences. But food's hidden superpower is as an educator. Food is the secret ingredient that adds context, depth, and connection to learning. And yet, food is so common, it regularly hides in plain sight, especially in education. I've noticed this many times throughout my career, which intersects at the nexus of food and education. Most days, it feels like I'm the person in the red space. As the conductor of our large food orchestra, we serve about 20,000 people a day at our 31 dining locations with a team of over 500 people. And in dining, we're always asking ourselves, how can we contribute to our students' education, overall education through food? And there were really four key elements that sort of highlighted this food as educator idea and then helped magnify it. For me, it was a combination of my culinary degree, my work here at Northeastern, and my doctorate degree. And also our students had a really profound impact on this. Their, their interest in food has grown exponentially. Now they're wanting to talk more and more about health, nutrition, sustainability, composting, waste, local ingredients. And then there was a professor who was really the linchpin here at Northeastern connecting dining and academics. He invited me to speak in one of his classes and he said, can you just answer one question? I said, sure. He said, what's it like to feed Northeastern? And I thought, huh, no one's ever asked that question before. But he said he really thought his students would be interested in what it's like to feed on the mass that we do. And his, just that single invitation was really the accelerator to the current work we do with six professors at four different colleges who really understand the role of food as educator. But this is rare, despite food's existence across the curriculum. More often than not, learning can be siloed by discipline and department. And this can make it challenging for students to really have a holistic experience through their education. One example that we, we do using food as an educator is in our exhibition kitchen. Here is a very unique educational platform, especially for an institution like ours without a culinary or hospitality program. We've, over the past 14 years, we've hosted over 500 events for our university community. And Recently, we've modified it so now we can do hands-on cooking classes, which was something requested by our students. One example of an event that we hosted in the exhibition kitchen was with the professor I mentioned earlier. He and his students wanted to merge theory and practice, the classroom, and the kitchen. So they were studying the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, otherwise known as SNAP, which is our country's largest anti-hunger program, serving 40 million low-income Americans. So what if I told you that on the SNAP program, recipients receive $125 per month for groceries? And then what if I reframe that a bit and said that it's $4.16 per day for what they describe as a nutritionally adequate diet? And then what if I show you what that might look like? And then what if I tell you it costs about the same as this? This is what we did the, for the professor and his students, and it, it really gave them a very profound learning experience using food as an educator. It helped them add context, depth, and connection to learning by really using the concrete power of food. So from the College of Social Sciences and Humanities to the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences at Harvard, where faculty and world-class chefs collaborated to create a, a course called Science and Cooking from Hawk Cuisine 
to soft matter science. This course was created to illuminate the principles between chemistry, physics, biology, and engineering. And in the course, the chefs came in and they taught the culinary techniques. And then the professors came in and, and taught the related equation. Students then took the theory and practice into their cooking labs and tried to recreate these exercises. One such exercise was focused on this equation. This is a heat transfer equation. The student, students were studying how heat moves through the body. And in order to do that, they were charged to make the ubiquitous chocolate lava cake. They had to calculate the amount of time and the temperature required to get the characteristically gooey center with the fully baked crust. This offered students a very powerful learning experience to re really try to recreate, bring theory to practice, and really take this equation and bring it to life. Using food as an educator, they were allowed to bring context, depth, and connection to learning. So now that you've seen a couple examples of food as educator, let's visualize a food as educator ecosystem, where food is at the center as the universal connector where it engages with all levels of education, pre-K, K through 12, higher ed, and lifelong learning, where the classroom, the community, and the kitchen are all merged into one, where we really rethink food's role as an educator, and where food can be a co-creator to add context, depth, and connection. And one really profound uh, side effect of this whole food as educator model is that we could end up with a more food literate society, where we understand food from many different perspectives, how it impacts our individual lives and our world. So now that we've learned a little bit about food, we know that food is the universal language that connects us. It often hides in plain sight. Learning can sometimes be siloed. So tonight, I invite you at dinner to try using food as an educator, try to discuss science, or waste, or culture, or traditions. And then remember, if you're hungry, food is a secret ingredient that adds context, depth, and connection. Thank you.